Hey everybody, welcome to the roof of my trailer. I've got a big project that uh, I'm working on here. Um, so I've had these solar panels up here on the roof for a while, se several years now, and they work reasonably well, but there's been some issues with them. And I also wanted to expand some of the capacity. So I've got, these are four 100 watt panels that are up here. I'd like to be able to generate more power. I, I, over time, I keep moving more and more of the systems in my trailer over to 12 volt and so it's nice to have a capacity of producing more 12 volt power and that's exactly what these solar panels are doing for me so anyway so i'm going to be completely redoing this i'm going to pull these down and then instead of the z brackets that you can kind of see on the edges there instead of using those to mount i'm actually going to use some strut channel it allows it'll allow me to be modular with some of the stuff that i'm doing on, up here on the roof so in addition to that it's also going to give me the option of putting more panels up here so i think relatively easily i can do well i know i can do six panels and i, I want to plan to expand out to eight but i'm not going to be doing the seventh and eighth just yet so yeah, so I'll be pulling these down, be putting a strut channel on the roof instead, and then mounting the solar panels to the strut channel. Uh, that should give me the option to re replace one easily if I ever have a problem with one, or remove them if I need to put something else up here on the roof. You know, for example, uh, if I need to put antenna arrays up on the top, or I need to mount a camera up on the top of the trailer, it'd be nice to be able to very quickly unbolt the solar panel and in order to put a platform that I can attach those other things up here in, in their place. So, but the other problem I wanted to address, uh, I, I know you can't see it in the video you're looking at right now, but these panels collect dirt and dust quite a lot, especially along the front edges. Uh, so when the trailer is parked here, the front of the trailer, the front, front of it is uh, pointing downward ever so slightly. And so what happens is water pools on the front of these panels and dirt collects there and it doesn't seem like much but even a little bit of dirt on a solar panel can really impact its output when i remount these panels they're actually going to be angled forward in about three degrees and so that will help to alleviate any pooling of any water with that said i'm actually going to go ahead and pull these panels down and then start filling in some of the holes uh, where where they've been mounted because i won't be reusing those uh, with the new systems Okay, everyone, that's gonna do it for tonight. Uh, definitely run out of daylight at this point, so it's getting, actually getting kind of dark. Uh, but I needed to get the holes filled in before the night is over. 
uh, and I can come back and do a more thorough job of sealing that. Probably tomorrow, we'll see. And, uh, and at that point we can actually start installing the rail system, drilling new holes and getting that bolted, mounted up here. Uh, and before I do that, I'm actually gonna give this thing a good power wash because it is really filthy. So we'll take care of that. Signing off for now. Picking up from last night, so after after I filled in the holes with some uh, silicone last night, uh, earlier today I came up here and I power washed everything to make sure it was nice and clean, and then I laid down this material here, which waterproofs, it gives an additional layer of waterproofing. So those, those pieces are, are now in place, and so the old holes at this point should be fully sealed and so we don't have to worry about any water getting in through any of those. So at this point, we can really just start measuring for the rails and bolting those down. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, yeah, and I've got Paul here helping. He's running camera at the moment. There's Paul. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, here we pa go. Paul knows a lot about this stuff and so he's very handy. And uh, gonna be great to have a second set of hands up here. All right, so what we need to do is we need to measure out where the rails are going to go horizontally, and then we can actually start drilling the holes. You can do rails like this? Well, the rails, rails are going like to go this way. Oh, good, yeah. Yep, cool. yep, and then we'll bolt through here. And I've got, here, move this out of the way. Hardware-wise, I've got everything we're going to need pretty much right here. So the process here is we've got the rails, and then what we're going to do is grab one of these long bolts, washer and the rail and then we've got these one inch standoffs so that we're not bolting right up against the top of the roof and that will go through there and then we'll do a rib nut into the structure of the trailer I'm very familiar with those yeah and then a we'll bolt in bolt into that and on, on top of the the strut this will go in and then twist into place so the Start to go like this, put it in like this, twist it, and that'll lock it into place. And then we'll have, they're monstrous, but we're gonna use these. And then we'll do bolt, the lock washer, maybe even a, a regular washer through, and then bolt that down. And then we'll do something similar going into the the panels themselves. So, and then I have two different sizes of, of brackets like this. I've got the short ones and then the tall ones. And the reason for that is that I want the panels to actually rest at a bit of an angle so that water doesn't collect on them. Was it? <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> okay. All right. So our plan at this point, uh, we know the dimensions on the rails that we're going to be installing. So they're going to have two rails that go down the center. And those will be for the center row of panels. And then we're going to have two rails on each side. And those will be for an additional uh, a set of panels there. And those are going to be a total of 11 foot six. However, the rails themselves will only come in 10 foot lengths. So we'll take the remaining pieces off of the two eight six rails and then put those on the end, bolt those on the end of a couple of the 10 foot and that'll get those out to the 11 six that we want. How many people do multi-camera shoots when they're installing solar panels? Yeah. <laughs> Each of these panels is 100 watts. 
And I've seen them produce close to that, even though they're not aimed directly, at the, they've never been aimed directly at the sun, but I have seen them get close to 100 watts piece. I got, currently have four, I've got two more that are coming, and then I'll add two more later, later on. But uh, these are 26 and three quarter inches wide by 39 and three quarter inches tall. It's kind of become difficult to separate when you lay them like this. They hook onto each other. Let's grab this one. Okay, we're cutting eight foot six. Now I need a full face shield with this. Got a metal shaving from the saw. It says, I taste blood. Am I bleeding? I'm going to whack Paul upside the head with these. If I edit it right, it'll be me handing it up to myself. <laughs> All right, we need to take some measurements here, make some markings. Okay. All right, so the panel. Are you gonna go? Panel is this wide, and then we're gonna come in a little over an inch. So this will be the inner edge of the outer panel. And so. Inner edge of the outer panel. My mind is exploding. And then we'll have an inch between. So right here will be the outer edge of the inner panel. <laughs> the outer edge of the inner panel. And then we're going to want the rails to be somewhat inside of that. How are so, you do this? Well, there's nothing to bolt to there anyway. So, can we just go that way? Well, it's not going to. It's. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's fine. What I mean, because it isn't needed. This, this is just extra. Yeah, but I could bolt other stuff to it, like exactly. antennas or whatever. Anything. So, yeah. so I, I, all I really need is for this back to be far enough back to get the rear side of the panel, which is, is going to be like right about here. Uh, so, so about where it's at, about where, yeah, that's, that's a, yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to go any farther than that. So right about there. So. What do you want to do with this? Though? We're going to be above it. It's not going to matter. Got the one-inch spacer underneath. On, underneath this, even. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that. Space. Yeah, that that way it gives the the roof a chance to flex. I mean, yes, you could bolt it right down to the roof, but then the roof's gonna do weird stuff and not. Yeah, I like that. Not. Idea. So but yeah, having it having it up an inch that also uh, makes it easier for water to drain. Yeah. Do you think you're? Okay. So distance-wise the edge about 34 in the center from here do you want to do it on on your tape like right on the line well we're gonna be bolting through the tape then yeah I mean you need to right yeah we'll have to mm -hmm. yeah I wasn't anticipating that there would be a rail right there but that is what it is okay so this this is what from your previous yep you're covering a hole open. yep Parking. Oh, the camera! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Cut. There's a 32 in. That, that's really close to the old hole. I don't love that, if I'm being honest. All right, we need to cheat it a little bit. We can come, we can come in further. There's no, no reason. In further? Not, well, this way. Just go there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't trust that hole. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Those were my experimental holes. I had to drill a couple of them before I found them. <laughs> experimental holes. <laughs> I mean, that, those are the first ones I drilled. And I had no idea exactly where the beams were, and I missed. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll make, make things a little bit easier. Okay. Changing the plan. We had, a, we had a plan. But Changing we're, the 
We're abandoning the plan. Nope. So many tools. I'm really not a fan of tape measures. Never liked them. Need to invent something cooler. Lasers. Lasers. <laughs> I don't want to be the one to do this. <laughs> um, should we tap it? Or should we? Well, we know, we know it's along this line. Should we just go, should I go? Go on, yeah, go on the line. Go on the line. going right on that line? Yeah. Am I doing this? Yeah, you're doing it. Oh, it's on, it's, it's on hammer drill. We need to put it on regular drill. <laughs> <laughs> Is that looking good so far? It's good so far, yeah. Okay, let's take a peek. Wood. There's wood! Okay, so what does that mean? I don't know what the wood layer is. is there, there must be <laughs> there must be wood underneath this then. Okay, we'll keep going. I mean there's there's definitely support there. See any metal in there? Yep. Okay. I'm seeing metal. I'm not totally centered on that. Do we need to adjust position? We'll see how can I'm you, not... Can you, can you see the edge? I mean... <laughs> no, keep going. Well, you know on the line is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. They, 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 they I, I, don't know, I don't know that the line is exact. Okay. So, it's just in that ballpark. Okay. Maybe we should get a stud finder. What if it what if it worked? I'm highly skeptical. Oh, I think I'm through something. Yep, you're yeah, you're into the study. They're sorry, they're one inch square tubes. Okay. Yeah, I can see the thickness of the of the tube. Yep. And that's gonna be pretty hard. I wonder if what if we had like a, a probe and you could probe on each side and see I don't know well, if that would work. I, I say we just, really hard I say we just keep drilling until the hole's big enough. Pretty obvious. Now I am touching the bottom okay. part. Okay. So then we're gonna need to go to a different kind of bit. They're gonna provide. Is that gonna pro provide enough of a difference? I think it's almost there. If you can just tap it in, it's barely. Right. Just tap, tap, tap it in. Yeah, you just have to get, have to, I just have to get it in once, right? Yep. And then it's permanente. I mean, if it does drop in, then it's, it's fine, but it's, I, I think if you can. <laughs> yeah, that's all it took. Okay, and then you switch. You, you, I'm gonna... Yeah, you've, you've done it before, so yep. you, you know how it feels. Okay. So the rib nut goes in there and is basically a permanent application of threads. There's no threads about halfway up on this, and when you put it on this, this uh, what do you call this? The die or whatever. Yeah, I guess. I guess that's, that's what the instruction called it. Keep so. the arms open, and when we put it in. supposed to crush you want to make sure it's nice and straight and then all of your might until it stops and then you let go we twist it a little bit more I don't know what that sound was something broke that off didn't sound good <laughs> it's not supposed to it's supposed to just crimp uh, let's pull it off and see what happens I wonder if we pulled, pulled through the ceiling. No, it looks all right. You know what? I'm gonna call that good. I can't see anything broken. Yeah, I'm gonna call that good. So we said 34, right? 34. Chalk lines right there. Let's just go ahead and chalk the entire entire run, so I'm having to mark every single one of them. On mine, it's toxic, shut up. Now where are we, uh, should I go in the 
center of this hole? Yep. I feel a little better that Doug does this. <laughs> to his own freedom. Why? For no reason. Or, you know, much quieter. Now we're not even close yet, so. Yeah, we're going to bow. Shoot right through the through. It's cutting the metal, I can feel it. There we go. Yeah, we just broke through the metal. Okay. How much, how much bigger do we need to go? Definitely more than that. This is one where we are actually on the edge of the... Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, you can no. see, see the uh, edge. I just went out of focus again. Right when I zoom in, silly thing. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Got a little carried away on that one. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, dude, that's what I was worried about. <laughs> oh, man. How do we fix that? A washer? Uh, yeah. Washer. May only riv nut to the washer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. There it goes. Yeah, perfect. And then just try to maybe lean it towards me if you can. And then towards this way a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, right there. That looks nice and straight. Yeah. Okay, see. I'm going to back it out and see where we're at. Yeah, that's... Actually, it looks pretty good. Okay, I'm hesitant to go too much on it. I don't want to pull it out. Yeah. We'll break the tool. What do you think? See, it's it's in there now. Yeah, right? it's it's in there for sure. Yeah, yeah. This one's actually more a lot more sturdy than that one. Yeah. Yep. So so we stumbled across a better way to do it. Yep. Well, we got. We got two drills, two step bits. You wanna? Okay. Well, do we want to do the Forstner? I don't think we need it. It's doing it with that, right? Mm-hmm. Should. They're on two inch spacing. And then he's got it, he's got enough head on him, right? He should. <laughs> well, I want to see a, I actually want to cinch it down. Can you hand me the? I don't think that one fits. 
should be should be that size. It's not um that's not the right one. What's this? Nine sixteenths here. This is a half inch. Oh. Okay. Well we can, we can swap it. Oh, washer on top, huh? Yeah. ND? There's an ND on this? Yeah, on the back. It's pretty rigid. It's not, not really going anywhere. Okay, tell us what we just did. All right, so, got the first rail test fit. This, this is not, we're not permanently installing it just yet. But, so yeah, we did the rib nut into the structure of the trailer and then we have a washer and then a one inch spacer and then on top of that we put our strut channel and then another washer and then our one and i think they're one and a half inch bolts no they're more than that and that's like one and three quarter inch bolts going through that and that makes it pretty strong it's pretty good and so it's not all the way down and of course yeah that one yeah kind of missed the mark yeah we, we 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 discovered after we did that one that it's better to actually drill through the all the way through the top layer and then have the rib nut just go into the, the support member instead of into the instead we of might the top be able to fix this it might just come out if we pull it might just it might just come right we can, out. We can try we it could, we yeah could redo it, and it yeah would be we, can, much we can try sturdier. it yeah because these other ones don't move those are solid solid Look solid <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Spacer. Oh. This is great low light sensitivity, Doug. It's pretty darn good for 33 dB. <laughs> What's I assume it's not already opened up all the way on the iris. Uh yeah, 2.8, is it? Yep, that's as big as she goes. Alright, so we've learned some things. At least we got the two rails in.
All right, so we actually ran out of time today. We are out of light and Paul's got somewhere he needed to be anyway. So we're gonna call it, call it good for tonight, but we got two rails in. They are really secure, very, very strong. We're very happy with the way those turned out. Um, so we have a pretty good technique down now. So we'll be able to do the rest of them pretty quick. So I imagine the rest of it we can finish tomorrow in under, under a couple of hours. So, but yeah, it looks, it's looking, looking good. What we got going on here, very secure, very strong, very much, what we were hoping for and bit far better than what I had before. So that's going to do it for now and uh, we'll catch you tomorrow. All right, here we are day three. Uh, got two rails up yesterday, got the remaining four to do today and then hopefully get the, the solar panels on tonight. Um, Paul's not here yet, but I'm going to go ahead and get started anyway. Um, so it's always great to have his help, but at the same time, I, I can do a lot of this on my own so I'll go ahead and do that but yeah so today's goal is to get the additional four rails installed and then hopefully get the panels bolted down and hooked up as well so there we All right, got uh, everything loaded up here, I think. Everything that we're gonna need. A whole pile of drills, a whole pile of hardware. Yeah, so hopefully that's everything. Uh, when we finished last night, it was too dark to really show you what we had done. So, give you a better look. So, here are the rails. And it's bolted down to the supporting structures, the roof. Engage ND filter here. There we go. All right, so yeah, so in bolted into the supporting structures of the roof, which run laterally. And so, yeah, so each of these rails has four bolts, three, three sixteen inch, each, three sixteenths inch on each one of those. And they, these things are really solid. When I shake that, the whole trailer moves. So I think we're in a pretty good spot there. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and start measuring out for uh, the next few rails and uh, start drilling some holes. So we'll, we'll take it from here. here is uh, extending these rails a little bit so these are 10 foot rails and that's enough for two panels but if I want to do three panels I actually have to make them a little bit longer so I've got these additional one and a half foot pieces that I cut off yesterday so I'm just basically bolting these onto the end there so there's a bolt and then a washer and then it goes through this strut and then through uh, a little plate there and then on the other side there's another washer and then followed by a lock washer and then a nut so I'm just attaching those and I'll make it really really strong way stronger than I actually need but uh, that's it's a very clean way to do it
Okay. <laughs> I had to run to the store to pick up uh, some more washers. Somehow I grossly miscalculated how many I was going to need. So ran out before we finished. Well before we finished. But we've got that underway and we've, we can now finish the rest of the installation of the rails and hopefully get the uh, panels up tonight. So that's where we're at. Run. Nope. There it is. Oh, that one's soft. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's an accidental hole. <laughs> I changed my mind on the distance that I wanted. Whoa. Yeah, as I originally, it was originally going to do six inches from the edge, and I was like, no, nah, I, I want to do the spacing the same on these as those, so I had to come in another two. Cool. Good. Good. Excellent. I mean, excellent. Oh, this is a great shot. Can't see your head. <laughs> Perfect. And cut. Okay, I'll have to do this one too. All right, so two more washers. Hmm? I have not gooped that. I have not gooped that entire rail. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Shouldn't have to do the. Shouldn't have to remove the whole thing. Just we can do one at a time. Go ahead, no, we're good. Should be there. Yeah. Okay, and then <laughs> fill in the new hole, <laughs> just emerged. I think I'm gonna need the second tube of this stuff that I bought. I mean, we're not getting low yet, but still got a long way to go.
Okay, hey everybody, well, I'm on day four of this project. Uh, hope to get it wrapped up tonight. So, I say day four, but it's actually just been evenings. We are currently in the middle of some record heat here where it's getting over 100 degrees every day. And I don't dare work in the sun. That'd just be way too hot, especially up here on the roof where you got the nice shiny surface. And that reflects the sun straight up on you. So very, very uncomfortable to be up here during the daytime with the sun out. So I've been avoiding that. Plus, I also have other responsibilities during the day. So um, so anyway, today I'm getting the solar panels mounted and wiring will be easy. I, I mean, I, I've had the panels up here before, so wiring the panels will just be a matter of connecting up the, to the cables that are already here. So no big deal. But uh, I'm gonna just kind of show you what I did yesterday, or what Paul and I did yesterday, so we got the last of the rails installed. So there are a total of six of them, so three sets of two. And they're spaced to 16 and a half inches between them. Um, one of them came out a little bit long. I'll get my bandsaw up here and cut that a little later on. Other than that, it all seems to be working pretty well. Didn't run into any major problems, except did run out of the uh, one inch spacers. So got all these spacers that we I'm using to keep the rails above the surface of the roof. And somehow I ended up two, two of them short. So those two white dots that are left and right of your frame, we drilled the holes, but we didn't have spacers. So I had to leave those uh, unfilled at the moment. So well, anyway, that'll get resolved soon enough. I've ordered, ordered the replacement parts. But so yeah, we've got, got these rails in place. They're anchored every two feet. So, and these are so, so, so strong. We bolted directly into the beams, I guess you'd call them, that uh, run this direction on the trailer. Um, and used rivet nuts, those guys right there in order to hold them in place, and they are really, really secure. And if you shake, shake, a, shake one of the rails, the whole trailer moves. So super, super strong. No worries about them ever coming loose. So anyway, so for today, I'm gonna be getting the panels connected. I've got some brackets I have to put on them, and I'll show you that process as I go. And then again, doing the electrical will, will take like two seconds because they're already, the trailer's already wired for them. So um, I'm gonna do four panels today. I have two more panels on the way. They're running late. They're supposed to be here by now. Uh, and then eventually I'll probably add two more. Although I don't know exactly when that's gonna be. I planned for all eight. So there's plenty of space for all eight up here. I just don't have the last four. Those two are on the way. So anyway, here we go. All right, so what I'm doing here, I've got uh, the markings on the panel here, 
Uh, it's not quite centered. I made a little bit of a mistake when I was giving Paul some dimensions. But anyway, we'll be fine. So I'll be drilling holes here and then have these brackets that will go on there and be bolted into place. And then this portion will be bolted down to the rail and that will be held in place by, grab one here, by these, these nuts. So you put those down in there, twist them into place, and then bolt like that, and that'll hold them very, very securely. So that's the idea. Um, I've got two different sizes of brackets here. That was intentional. Uh, I wanted the panels to actually have a little bit of a slope to them, so the, the taller ones will be in the back, and then the shorter ones, I did that backwards, but yeah, so the taller ones will be in the back, like so, and then the shorter ones in the front, and that will put a little bit of an angle on the panel so that they don't collect water. It's been a huge problem. With the panels flat, water doesn't run off, and when it dries, it leaves a lot of dirt behind. Not only that, it would very badly pull up on the front lip and just sit there and make a real mess. And so I'm gonna avoid that this time by making sure that the panels are a little bit of an angle. So if my calculations are right, it'll be about three degrees. So not enough to really affect the ability of the panel to collect light in any kind of way, good or bad but enough to keep water from pooling on top. So that's where we're at. So next step, I'm gonna be drilling the holes there and uh, attaching the brackets. So we have bolt going into washer, going into bracket, going through hole, and on the other side, lock washer and nut. Tighten it down just enough with my hands. And then get out the impact driver. Secure it just enough. There's actually two walls here, and if I tighten it too down, those walls are gonna. If I tighten it too much, those walls are gonna crush. So I'm doing it really just enough, holding it in place. So that should do it. And then repeat that same process a whole bunch more times. There we go, this is what an installed panel looks like. Step around here and give you a better look at the front. So, yeah, they're on rails and move it or remove it as needed. So, just uh, three more to go tonight.
two panels are installed and wired, actually. So, yeah, so these two panels are actually in series. Each one generates up to 20 volts. So since they're in series, that means that leg is going to have roughly 40 volts on it. And then when I install the next two panels, this one and the one's going to go behind it, those will also be in series, but those will be paralleled with these. So I'll be sending 40 volts into my solar charge controller. The wiring in series is actually pretty easy. So I've got this panel, the first in the series. This is its positive output, and that's going to the negative input of this panel. And then as far as connection to the solar charge controller, the negative side of this panel goes to the charge controller, and the positive side of this panel goes to the charge controller. So it goes so from negative to positive, it goes charge controller to panel one to panel two back to charge controller. starting the last panel now. So I've got uh, three installed. This one, this one, and this one. And about to drill the holes and mount this last one. And that will be essentially it for tonight aside from cleanup. So yay, getting close. Got the last of them in. So got the final panel in there. So all four are fully bolted down and connected. I did make one small little change. I decided to share a bolt between the front and back panels instead of having separate ones. 
just to save a little bit of hardware. Uh, it might be a little more inconvenient if I ever need to take these down, but so be it. It won't be that bad. Um, yeah, I mean, just a quick zap with an impact driver and and they're off. So, so yeah, it's all fully wired, and I I did actually already go inside the trailer and check to make sure that I'm getting the voltage that I expect, and it is coming in at 39 volts, which is what I expected it to be. Even without any sun hitting them, it's producing the voltage that, that I wanted. Of course, not producing any current at the moment because there is no sun, but, uh, but that means that everything is actually wired correctly. So at this point, I'm just going to do some cleanup, and then I'll be done for the day. So uh, if I do a final wrap-up, you'll see me there. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions about this, you can leave those in the comments section down below, or join me over on Discord at djp.ly slash Discord, and have a video topic, uh, a channel there about my solar slash rail install system. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later. Four panels installed, eagerly awaiting the last, or the next two, I should say, not the last two, because I'm going to have a couple more. One installed right there on that side of the air conditioner, another one installed over there on that side of the air conditioner, eventually. I have to replace my solar charge controller before I do that. So, yeah, so we're good. It's all, uh, it's all working. <laughs>